800,000 in sales. And you guys are just doing the reconciliations in the month and close, right? No AP, no AR? Right. Okay. So automatically right now, I'm thinking about $800 a month for the accounting at 800,000 a year, which would put me at 9,600 a year for the accounting. And then on the tax side, I'm thinking about two, two, one entity, one, one business entity, one legal entity, one legal entity. So 2K for the business return, I'm thinking about 750. Okay, oh, it's a Schedule C. Okay, so 2,000 for the business return, 7,500 for the individual return, but, so that's there. And then also the tax planning is, you know, first off, how much can I save the guy? And you guys, it's a little bit easier this year than normal because the whole, yeah. the Trump thing is a great marketing thing. You know, it's like, oh, there's a big change in the tax code. So obviously things might change. So, you know, the biggest question in how much you're gonna charge him is how much can you save him? You've already got his file. You already know his situation. You don't know everything. So you have to have a call, right? Because you probably never pay attention to this client. Somebody else handles it. You haven't talked to him in two years, whatever the case may be. So you got to set up a 30 minute call, but it's a 30 minute call that takes someone that's been, that's been paying 5,000 a year, right? So if we get this 30 minute call set up, let's say, and let's say we can save them 15,000 in taxes, which means we're going to charge 5,000 for the tax plan at least, right? If we can do that. So we could have a 30 minute check in call with that client to do the exact same work basically, right? And to take this to 9,600 plus 2,000 plus 750 plus 5,000. Do what? There's no business return. Oh, that's true. But there's going to be. There's going to be. You're going to incorporate him, no? No, we took him off of this one. Okay. And there's no reason for him to incorporate now? I think I, yeah. I'd look at it. Yeah, it, you know, if it makes sense, put one on there, then you can charge for that too. You know, and, and how many people in here it was, um, Jeff Trapp and then Christina Leal too. I mean, they don't, there's some people in here when, when they do the tax plan, what it does is it actually make, it allows you to charge even more for the business return. Because it's kind of like, I'll keep checking in on this on an annual basis. They charge three or 4,000 sometimes just for the business return. So the point is, even if we hit these numbers, 96 plus this, that's 12, 13, that's 18,000 in the first year and 13,000 every year going forward as opposed to five for a 30 minute call to do the same freaking work. Now, the only more work you're gonna have to do here you will have the business return and you will have the tax planning, but you're kind of going through that with everybody and thinking about it with everybody anyway. So it's not like it's gonna take you a ton of time. So there's not that much more work, but that's 3.5 times the fee for maybe 1.5 times the work. That's great. That's great. So I'm always thinking about that. How can I sell something? And frankly, when you get really good at this, right? You can 3.5 times the fee 0.75 times the work. That's what you gotta start thinking about, right? And you're like, Andrew, oh my gosh, Andrew, how could that be possible? How could that ever happen? Here's how it happens. I'll use Sandra as an example. Sandra charges somebody, let's say she charges somebody $2,000 a month, which I know most of it's hourly right now, times 12 months, that's 24,000 a year. And she's getting paid out over the course of a year, as opposed to what she wants to do now, which is do more of this exit strategy planning for $25,000 right there up front, right? For, for exit strategy planning and tax planning, okay? Which one of these is gonna take more time? It's gonna take way more time. The guy's $20,000 IT audit, you know, so you want to come up with your own unique stuff. The more unique you can be, the more, more unique you can be in, in creating something for the niche, creating something for the people that you want to work with. So this is probably, let's say on a monthly basis, let's see, it's 2000 a month. Let's say we put eight, she's doing 250 an hour. So that's eight hours, right? Eight hours into this. Can she design this process? So she puts in less than eight hours over time. Heck yeah, she can. And then this guy with IT audit, way less. So that's the point is you can get the same fee or a higher fee for less time. And that's how you explode margin. So when people say, oh, but I don't have any time. I'm like, dude, we're about to create some time because we're gonna fire some clients. And that's exactly what happened with you, Horsley, right? Horsley's business is three times the size with how many, maybe 60% of the clients? Yeah, so think about that, guys. When she first started with me, her business is 3x bigger, bigger with 60% of the clients. Because she started at, she had some clients that were at, she bought a business and she had some clients that were at 50 bucks a month. So we got Rachel beat. 
Yeah. <laughs> Race to the bottom, you know? So three times bigger, but she has 60% of the clients. You know, people don't understand it and they don't believe it. So when I talked to those ladies today and I said, look, you're charging 45 bucks an hour, you should be at 125 bare minimum, bare minimum, 125. Like, cannot compute, that is not real, there is no possible way everybody would leave. I'm like, yeah, hopefully 70% of these people will leave. Because if 70% of the people leave and you triple your fees, you're making the same money with one third of the work. All of a sudden, you're in Tahiti. Not really, but at least you're not dying and not seeing your kids, you know? So who has this problem of focusing on the time but not looking at the quality of the revenue and what are we gonna do about it?